This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway, supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. Hey guys, it's the awesome chat, uh, ready to talk tech with another uh, awesome entrepreneur here in the Pittsburgh area, Mike Sorgat Sorgatron on the Twitter here in Pittsburgh PM Mayhem Studios. Um, we have so many great, great interviews. Check us out at awesomecast.net. Check out the awesome chat interviews we've been doing for almost a year now. Subscribe to it everywhere fine podcasts are downloaded and of course uh, video versions on youtube and facebook look for awesome cast so let's get right into it it's a return actually we've been sitting here the whole time since you last uh, uh checked this out maybe you're checking this one out first maybe you should check out our other conversation about 8-bit evolution and uh retro video games and rebuilds some great stuff james deegan is with us once again still hanging out with that awesome looking pac-man machine <laughs> my consultant it's your consultant <laughs> and of course today today we're talking about e360 technology um of course you know everybody's concerned with all these computers and what happens to them nobody wants them in a landfill um you the best buys taking all kinds of crazy stuff uh or maybe you're finding something in your area i know you know i was i was just chucking old computers i didn't want any more at uh, construction junction they were taking them for a bit but you have kind of a different approach to uh, what happens to all this old technology, all these old items um, um, of a certain vein? Uh, tell us about what E360 is doing. <clears throat> so we say that recycling is the best last option. Uh, you lose 30 to 40% of an item's commodity material value when you take it through the smelting process, which is, you know, that's what recycling centers do. Uh, it's high velocity, 10 in, 10 out. And the, you know, kind of brand ambassadors of reuse as the commodity values have continued to decline, have found a, a great way to supplement that by refurbishment and resale. Now you can imagine from a workflow standpoint, having a technician that's capable of fixing everything from an iPad to a hematology microscope can be a little bit of a challenge, but that's what we do with E360. Now we have uh, several years of detailed, you know, intellectual capital management where we're, we'll take on a new device, uh, we'll go through our due diligence to see what parts can be sold independently, repurposed. You know, we, we sell both refurbished units, refurbished parts, you know, for, for everything that we, we touch. And we have uh, tons of businesses <clears throat> in our network that we work with directly. We work alongside and supplement several local electronics recyclers. In fact, one of our clients is Best Buy. So one of the reverse logistics center chain uh, kind of locations, they sent us about 1% of the return material, which is a lot. But it's, uh, it's everything electronic with a plug or a battery. So we try to stay away from the toxic things, which are CRT televisions, you know, batteries in large quantities, bulbs large quantities. But that's something we refer to one of our partners. And we focus on the refurb and resale side. So it's, everyone can be a customer for us, and we work with startups and Fortune 100 companies, mm -hmm. <clears throat> whether it's on inbound or outbound. There's not many places you can get a computer ready to go at $75, and that's one of the big unique differentiators that we have. We want to give the tools to the students, the entrepreneurs that, that can't afford what they need to get the job done, get them started, and, and keep them equipped as they grow. Right, right. And I've seen like like some Goodwill, like I, there used to be, I don't know if it's still there, but there used to be like a computer shop, uh, yeah. Goodwill ran, but it was always like, uh, it's a few years older and it's a little more than I want to pay for that old of machinery, right? right? Now, now I got to see, uh, again, as we're recording this, I got to see the facility today and it is, uh, for, for the tech geek, it's kind of a wonderful playland of <laughs> of, 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 of stacks and, and rows of, of, of monitors and, and laptops and, and and who knows what in there, of course. And, of course, <laughs> arcade machines like we see in the video if you're with us here at Pac-Man hanging out. Um, yeah, we do get everything. We get, uh, you know, this past week I was mentioning some of the unique equipment we received. So mm -hmm. we got a, a cabin pressure generator for an airplane, you know, a generator for a helicopter, uh, you know, oxygen tank for some veterinary equipment, and maybe 200 computer desks. <laughs> That's alongside our normal stream with laptops, desktops, things like that. So it's vintage audio equipment, turntables, you know, uh, microphones, monitors. It's 
anything with a plugger or battery that's not toxic comes through our building on mm-hmm. behalf of one of, the, one of our partners or one of the businesses we work with. And you said most of this stuff, like in some way, uh, uh, finds itself in a new home. Um, whether for resale, reuse, re, you know, or you know, I know you, you mm-hmm. work with charity events and everything. As we talked with Apeit, you definitely have like you, you find a place for charity around your businesses. It seems. Yeah, we try to always find you know a, a way to do good while we're uh, you know following through with our front room activity mission statement. You know, we want to stay and be ecocentric, which it sounds really easy until you're managing as much stuff as we get in, you know, and then. You know, we're really proud that less than 1% of the items we have and the excess we produce would ever end up in a landfill. Mm-hmm. You know, we work only and exclusively with uh, certified R2 and E-Steward recyclers that are kind of leading the way to make sure that everything has a traceable downstream. So nothing ends up in any, uh, you know, nothing's exported, things like that. But, mm-hmm. you know, I think we're in the coolest part of the space since it's uh, finding a way to put them back into reuse instead of just shredding them. There's nothing like <clears throat> uh, un- unpacking our our beginning of the month material when it comes in. It's everything from you know ultrasounds to uh, you know vintage all-in-one pong tables and partially disassembled pinball machines mixed in with 500 laptops from a bank. <laughs> and, and you guys are tearing them apart and 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 you know making stuff work. It, it, it's it felt like 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 my 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 instinct walking around in there is I'm the person like you know you know as I told you like oh yeah I call this my duct tape studio. These are all repurposed machines that we have in here right. that people were getting rid of. And I'm like yeah I could format that put it have it you know you're talking to me on one right now right like this yep. is the side is missing from this laptop that you're speaking to me on <laughs> you know uh, but it works and that's the main machine I bring guests on right now right. Right? It's a core yeah, two yeah. duo. It's it's enough to do hangout and and the desktop <laughs> presenter, and we're good. Um, um. So so when I see like this this lineup of 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 of, of toys that just need a little bit of tend to care, like I, that that wanting to tinker and get these things going again, instinct is <laughs> just like let me add them. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, it's actually a really interesting model because once we have our processes down mm-hmm. and a little bit of custom software development and some other kind of growing pains that every company goes through, you know, we found that it's a really great way to pass value back to our clients by putting them back into uh, resale and finding a new life for them. It does take more effort and much more detailed workflow and processes, but Certainly. reaching the end market with a device that would have been shredded for eight cents a pound <laughs> we're able to pay most of our clients 200 to 500% more value than they're getting wholesale, let alone when they're shredding. So we're the perfect complement to anyone's recycling or end of life IT asset efforts. That's we will a- responsibly remove data with an auditable, you know, HIPAA compliant report. And we're going to make sure that our, our next priority is finding qualified ways to bring it to resale marketed in reasonable timeline and pay you for them. That's great. That's great. So, so if there's anybody with a with with a business out there that needs to offload some old stuff, these are the guys to talk to. Um, That's it. I, I want to talk about um, you know you you mentioned some solutions that you guys implement to to make this thing more efficient. Like I go in and, and I think I asked you at some point because I looked and I saw how everything was organized and everything, and and it dawned on me because again from our discussions before I was like. You guys have it figured out that all of this stuff is beta- database. You know exactly where everything is at on here. So you guys are also yeah. uh, more or less a software company. You're not just a reuser, mm-hmm. repurposer. Like you guys have developed a solution to make this all work as well. And the software is certainly more scalable than opening up hundred warehouses. Mm-hmm. You know, so we enable people that are already uh, similar parts of our industry in different states and different countries to securely remove data on a huge spectrum of devices, you know, either via Pixie Boot, uh, loose drives and RAID arrays, and it's every type of drive, SATA, fiber channel, IDE, and that solution didn't exist and, until we uh, pushed it out there. It's tablets, mobile devices. Uh, you know, that's the first part, that's the wipe software. We have a testing software that images and automates diagnostics for PCs. It's both better quality control for outbound items to prevent more reverse logistics problem coming back and allows us to warranty them better for customer satisfaction. And then the third part of our software is the, the sale part. So it, it's e-commerce automation. It cross lists up to about 40 different platforms. It has relisting management, you know, pricing tools, everything you need to be successful on the resale side of what we do. But the custom software development is truly our unique competitive advantage that has allowed us to 
operate and, and grow as quickly as we have in this space. And it, it's something we just recently started commercializing about four months ago, the first clients for the software. And as we move forward, I'm I'm always going to have E360 because I love it. But <laughs> Clarabyte absolutely is uh, taking more and more of its own life and, and growing pretty quickly. Our, our early customers are excited about you know what they're able to do with this material that they couldn't manage as effectively before they were just shredding it all. That's awesome. That's awesome. We, we hear if you guys are on audio, uh, there's definitely a lot going on in the background because it's a bustling place that you guys have going on there. Like, <laughs> I couldn't believe how many people were in this this warehouse uh, doing, you know, and, and, you know, these different sections, you know, from from the inbound <laughs> to the outbound to the data wiping. Uh, let's talk about uh, the data for a moment. Everybody's concerned, you know, what happens when my computer goes? Is, is, is my data safe and everything? Um, I just watched the episode of Silicon Valley uh, where they were they were wiping old hard drives when they were moving out of their space uh, uh, when the business was was, was kind of going under. Um, you know, what do you guys do for that to make sure they are safe? Because, I mean, you guys have, have business computers coming in. Um, um, and, and, you know, that, that's a concern. So there's a technical answer and then there's like a layman's answer. So the simple version is, uh, we've established a new standard for securely removing data mm -hmm. and having a separate, you know, similar to a Kaizen principle with lean six Sigma environment, a separate, very thorough, detailed quality control mechanism to validate that it's being removed. It's backed by a, a $4 million technology liability insurance policy. And it creates an auditable, automated paper trail that's very, very detailed with heuristics from fail points of the hardware to simple zero make model for a paper trail. Awesome. I think I followed most of that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, but there you go. Um, so so they're, they're taking care of it is the short answer. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome um uh from there uh you know uh you know so obviously you know you guys aren't handling everywhere you guys are here in pittsburgh um if you're in another location so uh, we have clients in texas california oh, there you go. okay you know so we receive a ton of stuff from a ton of places mm -hmm. if there's a good fit uh, we, it has to be win-win and we yeah. can lay it out very clearly like here's exactly how it works and here's how i would assume your profile type of company would operate mm -hmm. so here's where we fit in i can paint a very clear picture and it actually gives them additional we, we call it recovering hidden value mm -hmm. it's newfound revenue with securely removed data it has all the responsible downstream either with one of our partners uh or through them it, it's great because it crosses all the all the lines off and checks all the boxes they need when they're moving those devices that's awesome that's awesome. Um, so what do you, what do you think of the Apple robot that's taking care taking their phones <laughs> apart? I, I it, it seems like the right space for this. Um, but you know, you got no fancy robots named cute names like they do. Uh, but not yet. <laughs> no, no, no. But, <laughs> but also, you're not dealing with something as standard of this is an iPhone. Everything is the same. We have three different versions of it it's taken care of right uh, uh when you see like apple taking care of something like that for their reusing repurposing you know uh, uh, taking it in-house like that um do you think that's a good thing for the industry in general um absolutely yeah mm -hmm. i mean uh oems have to take some responsibility to, to pair up new manufactured devices and finding environmentally sound ways for uh previously manufactured devices that the basic concept that I think everyone should evaluate closely is how embodied energy works. So all the energy, all the resources that go into initially manufacturing these devices, how much of it is recoverable and how, how is it recoverable? So there's a, a simple and easy way to paint a picture. And I say, how many smartphones does it take to create a new smartphone? And unfortunately, the answer is zero uh, can, can do that. It's it's tough. There are a lot of finite resources that are used in, in manufacturing that are not able to be recovered. And, uh, you know, as <laughs> everything changes from an environmental standpoint and companies are taking and putting huge emphasis on the ecocentric sustainability part of what they're doing, anyone that's manufacturing devices should have good initiatives for handling the, the material whenever it comes back and finding reasonable outlets for people to do that downstream responsible demanufacturing way either repurpose the, the devices or, or or find a way to handle them in-house. You know, that's a big part of what the, you know, lead green companies work on and sustainable manufacturing is a huge trend 
and the resource recycling space. We attend a lot of industry conferences each year to see what a lot of the big players are doing from minimizing their packaging to, you know, Apple's robot. But uh, I do think that there is a huge need, even as recycling initiatives shift, for people to emphasize and focus on the model that we have with repair and reuse. Mm -hmm. And, and, and for people that aren't in that, I, I have a business, I have a lot to go th that, that, that fits the model for you. Uh, I see I'm an individual and I have old computers. What do you recommend for them as far as those reuse options? Well, if you can find somebody in your network that has either the knowledge or tooling to make sure data is responsibly removed and uh, find a, a second life for it, you know, an easy email to our info address and I can give you a specific use case. It's just info at e360tech.com, but uh, it depends on the device type. So mm -hmm. something that has toxic materials, the sooner you can get it to end of life to do the downstream commodity recycling, you know, the better it is for the environment. But if there is a, a, a the top of that decision tree, a way for either parts or the entire device to find a new life, uh, I will absolutely lay out that, that detailed trail. But, there are huge numbers of companies and nonprofits that solicit these, you know, P4 desktops, things like that, that don't have an in-house or a local domestic place. And they're, you know, kidding them, packaging them and setting up units to be sent out to, you know, Africa and India. And, you know, we're, we're a member of a, I mean, we've worked with, you know, CET USA and some other places that will take tested, qualified radio devices for, different nonprofit applications, you know, for learning tools or senior centers and <clears throat> whatever it may be, it, it both saves them budget dollars and provides a, an, an option for someone to put them back into reuse without having to do it independently. But individuals, you know, there are, depending on where you live, there are always going to be community recycling events this time of year. So they usually start around maybe March and they'll go until about October in Pittsburgh. There's about six recyclers in the area. And whether you're a one person or, or uh, you know, several hundred people place, <clears throat> don't hesitate to reach out and I'll be happy to either take care of and show you the solutions you need and, and set you up for success or make a reference to some somebody else in our industry that focuses on that. That'll give you the best and the best solution for whatever problem you have. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, for uh, tell us about what you guys are doing and and and, and just generally like I, I think the message of reuse and everything is is, is is super important as we're getting more of these gadgets uh, the materials it's not like recycling paper you know it's not like recycling pop cans you know it's it's a process and if we can uh, figure out something else to do with these in the meantime um, so maybe we don't have to make as many sorry Apple <laughs> <laughs> you know uh, but thank you so much where can people find out more for you and I actually tweeted out from the awesome cast this evening and hopefully I'll, I'll put it out when we post this as well uh, your, your article about don't recycle in 2016 over on LinkedIn look him up yeah, so e360tech.com. Check it out. Feel free to reach out our info address, which is info at e360tech. And uh, I'll be happy to assist anybody in anything they need, whether it's needing new hardware or looking for a way to securely manage your devices when they've reached their end of life. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thanks so much for joining us. And again, please go check out our other conversation with James here with 8-Bit Evolution. If you're a gamer or you just miss your old Nintendo and wonder if there's something that you could do with that. That's something else that can be repurposed, you know, uh, old game boys, et cetera. And you kind of see how these two uh, uh, stories kind of uh, fit together. And, and the two of the many, many, many things that James does. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me. James has been our awesome guest. Uh, join us at awesomecast.net. Subscribe to the awesome chat everywhere you can find podcasts. And of course, YouTube and everything else. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. <laughs>